Sometimes I wish we could return to simpler times. You know, go out, just grab a club, run half naked and bonk every single creature that comes across. So today I'll just try that. This is Uga Booga's journey to rekindle the first flame in Dark Souls. Let's do it. Upon waking up on the Under Asylum, I fist fought everything I found before getting my first weapon of the run, the Trusted Club. Buckle up, cause I'll be using this for a while. Anyways, I kept advancing, talked to a weird guy and didn't understand a word he was saying, so I murdered him and I obtained the Estus Flask, one of the few objects that I can use. I plunged the Asylum Demon, then murdered it and I was kidnapped by a giant crow. Man, that Dark Souls is pretty weird, huh? I arrived at the Firelink Shrine and there was a weird man there. Didn't understand a word again of what he said, so I decided to attack him, as that is just the way Ukabuga goes about things. It didn't go well. Twice. And thrice. And the one after that. So I decided to leave and I think he fell through a cliff while chasing me or something. But anyways, it is time to visit the Undead Bird. Interesting touristy hotspots I can mention, a cool bonfire, a merchant speaking random words that tried to assassinate me, holy shit, a dragon, and the Taurus demon. I don't know what Uga Booga's horoscope was that day, but the Taurus demons was dead. But never mind, because I went past him, went down a ladder, and found a weird guy looking at the sun. So I obviously joined him peacefully for a bit. I later entered the Undead Parish. Beated a black knight definitely on my first try and had a tough time dealing with a giant boar and stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it right there. Do you think you could win against a wild boar in a fight to death using just your bare hands? I think I surely win, but Wesky thinks otherwise. Tell us in the comments. Please, please tell us. Oh, and, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. It is gargle time. I think it's gargle time. Wesky put the clip. The thing is, there is no way to strategize these fights. I just have to go in, grab my club and BUNK! Either get good or surrender. And I do not surrender. Anyways, first bell rung, another one to go. Oh, and I killed a bunch of NPCs on my way here. No big deal, just like snapping my fingers. And you know what else I killed? Havel. Havel? Havel. And it dropped a super useful ring that I cannot use because Uga Booga does not understand what rings are. That's caveman logic for you. On my way to the copper demon, I encountered this kind lady merchant, and since I did not comprehend any of her words, decided to send her with her husband. Fortunately, she retreated to safety and told me to fuck off. I am pretty sure this moment won't have any kind of serious ramifications that can make me fail the whole challenge, right? Well, who cares? The copper demon is down, and with it, I obtained the key to the depths. And after getting roasted by a dragon, I entered said depths to head to everyone's favorite place. The light side. On my way there, I had to deal with the annoying poison of the rats, which I couldn't heal because Uga Booga doesn't know how, and face the gaping dragon, who shall be renamed as the Gaping Joke, because this fight is easy. Continuing my journey through the depths, I met a crystal knight at the gates of Byton. Once again, did not understand anything they say, so bonk! But this time, the crystal knight wasn't happy about getting murdered, so they consistently ended my life several times. I decided to let it rest for now and explore the depths some more, when suddenly I reached a section full of basilisks. You have to be really careful fighting against these beasts and the dangers they pose, but Uga Booga didn't care because all Uga Booga cares about is going bonk. And so he got cursed. This is horrible. With my HP cut in half, half, each boss fight was now twice as complicated if I didn't come up with a solution. The most obvious one was the lady merchant that sells antidotes, but you know, that relation has switched now to it's complicated. So I had no choice but to venture into Blightstone as a cursed caveman wandering rotted platforms and dodging fire dogs, fire dragonflies, and boy it was not fun. 
I'll save you the pain and suffering it implied by cutting directly to my fight with Quillac, the spider, but before I must mention that I found a bigger club to beat people up with. That's an upgrade. A pretty serious one. Quillac's fight was a major pain in the ass, mainly because I always started in an enormous disadvantage. By the way, this character reminds me of the Centaurus, but I think this doesn't have a name. So how about we come up with one in the comment section? We'll choose the best one and call it that from now on. S -s Spider Taurus? Sentider? Karen? Who knows? Surprise me. Well, this doesn't matter now, because as you can see, fighting Quillac while cursed and poisoned was a big no-no. And when I say a big no-no, I mean a big, chunky no-no. I decided to change my strategy and went back to the Firelink Shrine to head to New London seeking a priest whom I thought could end my suffering. After a whole bunch of lady ghosts ruining my life, I found him at the roof of a really old building and he was very kind to heal me, so Ooga Booga decided to spare his life. I traversed Blighttown again, this time uncursed, and went straight to Quillac for round 2. It wasn't easy, but now it was possible. I defeated the spider saurus weird woman thingy Ah, see, I, I am not good naming this thing. Uh, I defeated Quillac and moved on to rung the second bell, and now the path was cleared for Anorlondo. But before, welcome everyone to Sen's Fortress. Our first participant of the day is Ooga Booga, who shall face snake soldiers, giant stone balls, mimic chests, explosives, and much more. Do not switch channel just yet. Just look at how this poor fella tries to reach the top of the fortress. And the best part of it all, on the top, there is a gigantic iron golem waiting for him. It's brilliant, so despair inducing. And as a one black and white bear once said, Oh, Ooga Booga beat it. He, he beat the, the boss first try? Well, I guess that's the end of our show, Sense Fortress. Until next time. How beautiful is Anorlando, right? The first time I arrived here, after countless grimy areas with murderers and dead soldiers and rats, I was awed by the beauty of the place. But, but today we're gonna come through like a truck because we've got shit to do. Let's go! Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, be careful, don't fall, the ah, uh, uh, fuck. Alright, now we're talking, let's stop by to say hi to the smith and enter the cathedral. Our favorite iconic duo await inside. Quick note, I obtained the dragon's tooth for the challenge but it was too heavy and the damage output was similar to the great club, so I decided not to use it. So, the battle against Ornstein and Smog was insane. I entered unprepared with just one Estus Flask and 20,000 souls because I just felt like it. It was brutal. Each hit cut my health in half and I had near death experiences too many times. Too many times! Somehow, somehow, I managed to kill them both in my first try. We cannot include the whole fight in the video, but I swear it is one of the greatest accomplishments in my gaming career. Take that, Orn and Smoke! After that incredible duel, I chatted with Guinevere and obtained the lore vessel, unlocking fast travel with it. I returned to the Farling Shrine and, of the four Lords of Flame in my hit list, I decided to approach Nito first. The catacombs were a major pain in the ass, but while crossing them I found Patches and I murdered him on the spot. Fuck you, Patches. Then I fought against the most difficult boss in Dark Souls. Pinwheel. This bastard is tough. I struggled a lot in this fight, but managed to win somehow. I guess I was lucky. The tomb of the giants was horrible as it always is, and I could not see anywhere past me. I found a route to Nido that was pretty consistent and decided to face the Grave Lord himself. And it went horribly wrong. Nito's blade intoxicated me and the skeleton minions were really, really annoying. After trying a lot, and I mean a lot, I decided to go elsewhere first and come back later. That elsewhere was the Duke's archives, which were surprisingly easy. I reached Seth the Scaleless in no time and ended the traitorous dragon on my first try. One lord out of four. Let's keep it going. On my way to the next victim on Uga Booga's list, I was forced to put down Sif, the giant dog that protects Artorias even after his death. It was really hard to hold the tears. Rest peacefully, you beautiful creature. 
But anyways, the murderous caveman had to continue his journey. So I returned to New Londo and spoke again to the red priest that uncursed me before. I did not understand him, but when he realized, he used magic to translate to my rudimentary caveman language and explained then to me that he was going to unflood the city and that I should use the ring of Artorias to walk on the abyss. I thanked him and went straight to the fight, using one ring for the first time in the run. The four kings were really easy to defeat after a couple of practice attempts, and with them dead, only half of the lords remained. After paying a visit to the abyss, I decided to go to hell for my holidays. I absolutely hate this area of Dark Souls, as it seems pretty obvious that From Software rushed it before they were running out of time and money. But nonetheless, shit had to be done, so I crossed hell just like Dante 600 years ago and went straight to the bed of chaos. You might wonder, but Lenda, how did you cross the lava? That shit can burn you alive. And I forgot to tell you that the red priest also told me, dude, if you are going eventually to hell, just keep in mind there's an orange ring that it's really important to use. So please, for the love of God, put that ring on your inventory. And I did just that. So that's how I got to the bed of chaos. And speaking of the bed of chaos, uh... Holy smokes, this boss fight is dumb and boring. After two or three dumb deaths, I reached inside of the bed chaos and one punch man the hell out of it. All in order remains now. It is time for round two. This was soul crushing. After three hours facing Nido over and over and over again, I wondered if maybe this challenge was unbeatable at all. Or maybe I was not good enough, that was also a possibility. Maybe Uga Buga's journey ended here, being another dead soul reduced to bones and forced to guard the catacombs forever. So with that feeling of dread creeping on my back, I decided to leave Dark Souls and come back the next day. And the next day, I beat him on my first try. Let's go, baby! Easy! Easy! Come on, Uga Buga! Let's go get that first flame! After everything we got through, I reached my final destination, the kiln of the first flame. I ignored the knights that guarded the sacred place and went straight to its core, where Gwyn, the Lord of Cinder, awaited me. Gwyn was the toughest boss yet. He was quick, unforgiving, and his range was massive. I failed a lot of times because I was greedy, or I tried to heal at the wrong time, or simply I just couldn't keep up. However, I was so close to achieving victory that I kept trying, learning Gwyn's attacks with each defeat, and carefully designing a strategy that could make me win. After dozens of tries, I finally figured out how to face him and what attacks could be punished and what's not. And that was it. The fate of the Lord of Cinder was sealed. I conquered Dark Souls, Uga Booga stumbled upon another bonfire, used it to rest, and accidentally rekindled the first flame. Or at least, that's what I like to believe. Thank you so much for watching until the end. This challenge is tough, but it feels so rewarding to complete it. As always, I'll ask you to subscribe to Wild Rush for more content, to leave a like, comment your thoughts, and share the video with anyone who might be interested. Until we meet again!